they think this company is worth a negative amount of money. That makes no sense to me. All right, welcome to Talking Investing. I am Tom, and as always, this is not financial advice. Today, I wanna go through company Nano Dimensions, stock ticker NNDM. This is a favorite for this channel. We do hold this position in the 10K challenge. They just released earnings, and I wanna go through their earnings report. And in specific, I wanna talk about a statement that the CEO made directly to retail investors, which is us. So if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. And of course, everybody, please smash the like button. It does help us a lot. And of course, feel free to drop a comment below, and you will also see in our pinned comment a link to our free Discord. Okay, so let's get into Nano Dimensions. If we look at the stock, it's trading at $3.49.99. So we're in the middle of the trading day on April 1st. So at about $3.50. It's down a little bit on the day. Their market cap is now down to $895 million. So I will tell you, to me, this is one of the most confusing stocks in the stock market. The price of this stock and the market cap of this stock absolutely baffles me. I feel very strongly that this stock is wildly oversold and that people just don't get it. And when you hear what the CEO has to say, he's going to say just about the same thing that I've been saying in my videos for months. So again, this is not financial advice. At the end of the day, you guys have to decide whether or not this is a good investment for you. But I want to show you what's going on. And I'm to go through this earnings report. So let's get to it. March 31st, 2022. That was yesterday as the date of recording this video. Nano Dimensions Q4 slash 21 revenue indicates approximately 200% growth expected in full year 2022 over 2021. Then they say down here revenues for full year 2021 and fourth quarter 21 were 10.5 million and 7.5 million, 209 percent and 280 percent increase over the same periods in 2020. So 2021 they had a 200 percent increase over the year 2020 and in 2022 they're forecasting another 200 percent increase. So I'm not sure which part of growth stock people aren't understanding on this one. Back-to-back -back years of 200 percent growth is about as high growth a stock as you can get. So let's see what they have to say. Nano Dimensions reported audited consolidated revenues of $7.5 million in the fourth quarter and to December 31st, 2021, a 280% increase over the fourth quarter of 2020 and a 460% increase over the third quarter of 2021. So their sequential growth from quarter to quarter was 460%. In other words, they are just getting going. The fourth quarter was the best quarter they've ever had by far, and they're projecting that next year is gonna be much better. Revenues for the full year ended December 31st, 2021 were 10.5 million. So you can see three quarters of that was in the fourth quarter, an increase of 209% over the full year 2020. And this is important. Consolidated cash and deposit balances as of December 31st, 2021 were approximately $1,355,000,000. That's $1,355,000,000. And if you remember, their market cap is now at $895 million. This company has no meaningful debt, which means that their net cash is almost a half a billion dollars more than the market cap of this company. So that is the first thing that absolutely baffles me. There are instances where that can make sense. If a company has a massive cash burn rate as a percentage of the amount of cash they have, then it's possible to be in that situation. However, the opposite is true here. Their cash burn rate is tiny. They have like 35 years cash runway right now. So the fact that they're discounted, I think $400 million from their cash to their market cap makes no sense to me at all. Moreover, the fourth quarter of 2021 revenue run rate indicates an expected growth of approximately 200% in full year 2022 over 2021. If this occurs, the company will perform ahead of its own expectations by growing revenue over 10 times from 2020 to 2022, assuming no critical changes in the world's economy. Now here's a message from the CEO to shareholders, that's us. Okay, I'm gonna skip ahead. Our run rate in the fourth quarter of 2021 raised the hope for an approximate 200% growth in 2022 over 2021. This is very encouraging, yet it should not create expectations that our growth curve will change overnight from being based on inflection and singularity points 
as we proceed to what we hope to be a multi-billion dollar valuation. So remember, they're at $895 million valuation, and, and he's talking about a multi-billion dollar valuation, and that makes sense to me. All of our comparable public additive manufacturing companies, over 10 of them, including us, have lost 50 to 60% of their stock value over the last three to four quarters. Our current shareholders construct is made up of less than 100 institutional investors, many of which we have spoken with personally and explained our vision, mission, and growth model as above, and many dozens of thousands of retail investors. While many of the members of the first group, being the institutional investors, understand what to expect, the second group being the retail investors, us rarely speaks with us and their expectations do not necessarily fit what is described above that causes certain shareholders to lose faith and sell shares despite the growth which is ahead of them as their investment profile is based on short-term risk result profiles we respect them as much as we respect any shareholder but we are not always able to fulfill their short-term wishes in turn as they may oversell shares the price goes down on relatively low trading volume, which may indicate that it could be just a tiny small percentage of our shareholders that caused the share price to slide down. So this is some pretty in-depth talk, their investor mix on the retail investors and the impact it's having on their stock price. This is not typical at all to see in an annual report. I feel like their level of frustration with what's happening with their stock, I think he's really trying to reach out and let people know like, Take a step back, look at the big picture. This is a high growth company with massive money, massive cash runway, massive potential. We do not see ourselves in a need to raise more capital for operations in the foreseeable future. Again, their cash burn rate this year from operations was $42 million. So they could do that for almost 40 years and not run out of cash at the current cash burn rate. How do we intend to apply the capital we have and at what pace in order to increase the value of the company? I will answer this question by stating what we intend to do and what we intend not to do. Now, this is in direct response to the fact that there's a lot of rumors about all this cash that they raised. They diluted their stock quite a bit and raised you know, over a billion dollars. And people have been speculating they're gonna do this or that and, and some of it's good and some of it's bad. So number one, they're gonna invest in research and development. We intend to continue to use the capital for selected synergistic acquisitions planned to be immediately accretive to revenue and eventually accretive to EBITDA and earnings per share. So this is a big one. They're gonna to continue to acquire companies in related fields that allow them to become vertically integrated and increase revenue. This philosophy right here, I do not believe is built into their sales estimates. So when they say they're gonna increase sales by 200%, if they make the right purchasing decisions and acquisitions, there's the potential that it will go up significantly more than that, in my opinion. Again, this is not financial advice. I don't have any inside information, but he's clearly stating here, they plan to spend this money on buying other companies they've already bought for. Okay, then they go on to say what they will not do with the money. And I think this is to put some fears to rest because there's some speculation that they're gonna do some things that they have no intention of doing. So he's coming out and saying it. This is very unusual, but I like what he's doing here. This is very much transparency. We do not intend to rush into M&A transactions because the cash is burning a hole in our pocket and enter non-synergistic or non-accretive acquisitions by paying too much too early. We're gonna find the right companies at the right time. Opportunities will present themselves, but we want them to be synergistic and accretive. So they have very specific goals in mind. Number two, we do not intend to use the capital raised from our present and past shareholders to buy our stocks in the open market from the same or other shareholders. This is a big one. Everybody thinks they're gonna buy stock back at a discount and basically that means they sold stock to everybody to raise capital and what they would do with that capital is buy the stock back at a cheaper price and that would be against really their shareholders. So they're saying they will not be having a stock buyback. That is not the stage this company is at. He's talking about years down the line when they are cash flow positive and now they're sitting on money that you know maybe needs to be a dividend or 
a stock buyback. At that point, the share price will be higher the money at which people invested in when they raised all this money. Therefore, it will be a positive thing for the shareholders. Okay, so that is his message. This was a very powerful message to shareholders, in my opinion. I'm gonna take a quick look at the chart, but that's really what I wanted to show everybody. I'm gonna show you one more number before that. You'll see enterprise value, which is a number I typically don't tend to care about. Essentially, enterprise value takes cash out of the equation and says, you know, what's the actual value of the company? And you can see right now the market is pricing this company at negative $371 million. And that's not updated. It's really more like negative $450 million now. So that means they think this company is worth a negative amount of money. That makes no sense to me. At the worst, if you think they're totally worthless, then they should be worth zero. They certainly should not be worth negative $400 million. So let's go to the chart and take a quick look. Okay, this is a little over one year. This goes back to January 27th, 2021. They were trading at almost $18 at that time. They're now trading at $3.53. However, January and February of 2021 were a bubble. These small cap high growth stocks spiraled upward. So I like to discount this entire period. So I'm gonna fast forward all the way from $18 down to June of 2021, where they were at about $9. So I'm gonna make this part disappear and we're gonna ignore this. Let's call this their all time high. The first price target that I have in my mind is back in November of 2021, which was just four months ago. This stock was trading at about $6.70. That would be about an 86% increase in the price of Nano Dimensions stock if they were just to get back to their November numbers. And remember, they need an increase in their stock just to get back to a net enterprise value of zero. The next price target I would look at is if they could get back to their, their late June 2021 highs, if they could just get back to that, that would be a 160% increase in the price of nano dimension stock. So I think that's a very realistic price target for the next one to two years. So again, for me, this is a long-term buy and hold. And again, this is not financial advice. You guys have to make your own decision on whether you think they're headed in the right direction. I wanted to help deliver the message from the CEO directly to the retail shareholders, which is us. Because you can see, it seems like the retail shareholders are not necessarily understanding the vision of this company. So I've given you my opinion. You guys can do your due diligence and make an opinion for yourself. That's all I've got on Nano Dimension. Best of luck. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.